Shut up. Don't get in my way by pretending to be sick. You're a useless housewife. I was feeling very sick, but my husband ran out of the house, shoving me aside. I suppose the husband and the wife were to support each other in sickness and in health. He left me behind. The word despair whirled around in my head as I slowly lost consciousness. Then, someone unexpectedly came to my rescue. I'm Wendy, 32 years old. I married my husband Sam, of the same age about a year ago. I was leading a normal life as a working wife. We met at work, and he agreed with me to continue working after marriage. We shared the chores at home, but he was not very good at them. I gave him only simple things to do in the end. He didn't show any reluctance and was very proactive, so that I had no complaints about my marriage. At one point, I had been feeling mildly ill and went to see a doctor. Congratulations, you have just entered the seventh week. To my surprise, I found out that I was pregnant. That day, Sam and I shared our joy together. I'm going to be a dad. It doesn't feel real. That's how it is in the beginning. It will grow little by little. We were filled with excitement. I was full of hope for a happy future, but despite my expectation, reality took a different turn. Hey, where's my dinner? It's your turn to cook today. And you didn't even clean the bathtub. I'm sorry, I'm not feeling well, so I couldn't do anything today. I was in a state of intense morning sickness in the first trimester of my pregnancy, and I was barely able to breathe. I felt nauseated all day and could barely stand. I spent most of my days at home sleeping. I couldn't even go to work and kept taking sick days. Sam didn't even try to understand my suffering and didn't give me slack. No work and no chores. He thought I was just being lazy. He blatantly showed his dissatisfaction and became grumpier with me. Don't rely on me just because you're pregnant. You want me to do all the housework and go to work? How can you be a mother if you're ready like that? There were times when I thought to myself how he could treat me like that. At the same time, I understood that a wife who couldn't support him properly after he came home from stressful work was nothing but an annoyance to him. I thought about going back to my parents' house until my condition settled, but I was afraid to create an intractable distance between us. I hoped that my morning sickness was temporary and that it would stop in another two months. Until then, I just needed to make it work. That was what I told myself, but his disdainful behavior accelerated. The morning sickness somehow subsided after a little while, but the illness persisted for a long time. I was in and out of the hospital repeatedly, and I decided to take a leave of absence from work for a while. If I pushed myself too hard and something happened to my baby, I couldn't forgive myself. I discussed it with my doctor and my work, and we made a decision. Sam wasn't so understanding, though. Don't depend on me so much. It's your fault if you don't or can't work. While that may have been true, my decisions were made to protect the baby in my belly. Why did he need to blame me? I put up his unreasonable attitude. It's about the living expenses. I only get a small allowance during my leave. Can you contribute a little more from your salary? I pleaded with him. What the hell? Why do I have to pay for your portion as well? He wasn't helpful. I questioned myself if I should keep being married to him. My anxiety grew bigger and bigger like a balloon. I thought everything was going to turn out well when I got pregnant. How did it go wrong? The final straw was my mother-in-law, Anne. How are you doing, Wendy? One day, I received a call from her. She had divorced her husband when Sam was in the middle school 
and raised him single-handedly. She was very sharp, but gentle and treated me well. You should move around a little while you're pregnant. It must be hard for my son to do the housework while working. You need to take charge of that. I felt despair being told by her. She was not a bad person for sure. She had given birth herself, and I could understand her point of view. At that time, I felt like she was telling me not to slack and do all the housework, especially if you're taking time off work. Yes, you're right. I was planning to discuss Sam with her, but I felt completely isolated after that. She didn't seem to take into account my feelings. Let me know when you need any help. She hung up the phone after saying that, but I was still bothered by the situation. Then, a disaster fell upon me. I had been feverish and lethargic all morning. On top of that, nausea came and went intermittently. I managed to prepare Sam's breakfast in the weak state and then laid on the sofa. You don't need to show off that you're sick," he grumbled, and looked at me with disdain. I laid in bed after he left for work, but my condition didn't get any better. I was unlikely to be able to cook dinner for him. I contemplated ordering in, but then I remembered that our money was tight. The living expenses Sam gave me were far from enough, and I had to take out from our savings every month. In addition, my medical expenses for the upcoming birth weren't cheap. At that rate, we would have been broke before our baby was born. I called Sam nervously. I'm really sick today. I'm sorry, but I can't make dinner. Can you pick up something on the way back? What the hell are you talking about? You're a housewife. Yeah, but if I can't move, what am I supposed to do? I'm too busy. You go and get something. Don't make me do your job. After he hung up on me, I quietly wept. Later that evening, I heard the front door closing violently. Sam had returned home. Hey, honey, dinner is. Doesn't matter. I'm going out for a drink. At that time, my whole body was burning. And I could barely stand up. I'm feeling quite sick. I need you to stay with me tonight. I begged and pleaded. He quickly shoved me aside and yelled, "Shut up! Don't get in my way. You're just a useless housewife who pretends to be sick all the time." He then walked out of the house. I had no strength to go back to bed and collapsed in the doorway. Somebody. Help me! I screamed desperately in my mind, but there was no one to answer me in the house all alone. Then I heard someone's voice from afar. In my fading consciousness, a familiar voice spoke to me. Stay with me. Who is this? I lost consciousness there. When I awoke, I found Anne staring at me anxiously. I was lying on the bed in the hospital. Wendy, oh, thank God, you're awake. She happened to come over and called an ambulance when she found me collapsed at the doorway. You're safe now. Your baby is fine. I'll go get a doctor. Wiping her tears, she quickly left the room. According to the doctor, I was extremely anemic and had seasonal flu. If Anne didn't find me, the baby would have been in danger. I was feeling feverish all day, but I was surprised to learn that it was 104 degrees when I was taken to the hospital. But Anne, why were you there? Sam told me that you were being lazy, and he wanted me to come and discipline you. He had been complaining, so she finally came to assess the situation and found me unconscious. I'm sorry. I didn't even listen to what you had to say, but gave you a lecture. 
there was another reason for her visit. I also wanted to thank you for this. <sighs> that red cardigan looks great on you. Her birthday was last week. I had always sent her gifts on her birthday, and for Mother's Day every year since I got married. I'm getting old. The cold weather feels harsher on me. I remembered she had mentioned it to me, so I sent her a cardigan. The color was a little bit bright to aid a youthful look, but the design was simple. Thank you for remembering everything I said. You've always been attentive and cared about others. I was concerned if you really did nothing at home, as Sam said. And then this happened. I'm so sorry. Her tears flowed as she held my hand tightly. No, it's okay. I was going to talk to you about him, but it just got a little awkward. I cried in front of her too. Knowing that she was on my side made me feel lighter. After we cried together for a while, she said to me with fury, "He is my son, but what he did is unforgivable. How dare he treat the mother of his child in his terrible way?" Her mouth trembled with anger, and she squeezed her handkerchief tightly. So, what are you going to do about him? I told her about my plan, and she nodded her head in agreement. I'm on your side. I'll always have your back. I made up my mind to act upon it after being assured by her. After a week in the hospital, Anne accompanied me back home. I didn't hear from Sam once during my stay there. That no longer mattered anyway. When we arrived home. There was a terrible stench in the air, even though it had only been for seven days. I felt like my nose was going to fold out. What's that smell? It smells like a wild beast lives here. And almost made me laugh, but I had it back. The smell was out of this world. Sam was lying on the sofa in the living room, drooling and snoring. Wake up, you idiot! He was instantly awakened from his dream by Anne's scream. He jumped off of the sofa with a pitiful yes. Oh, what, Mom? Wendy, you've been away from home for days. What have you been doing? He immediately complained to me, but Anne put him in place. Wendy was in the hospital. What's with this mess? A zoo is better than this. She was right. In just one week, the house had turned into a garbage dump. There was a collection of empty beer cans and food scraps in the sink. Damp hand towels and underwear were strewn about, and the floor was sticky as if some liquid had been spilled all over it. It's worse than a zoo. I wonder how you were living here. I muttered to myself. And he glared at me. Don't talk so high and mighty. You're the one who. I doubt that even a baby would make such a mess. I had no idea you were incapable of taking care of yourself. I calmly stated my mind. It was actually true. When I thought about it, I realized that I did a fair amount of cleaning and laundry. When I was at home, at least it wasn't as messy as a cage in a zoo. I had never imagined that he was a chimpanzee with no life skills. Why did you leave Wendy behind that night? He was completely overwhelmed by her pressure. Men, no matter how old they were, always seemed vulnerable to their mothers. She just sulked like a little kid and told me not to go out for drinking. You're saying that she faked her illness. Even though she was so pale with the high fever, do you have a brain? She was a relative calm person, and that was the only time I heard her scold him harshly. He remained silent, glaring at me. How dare you rat me out! I could almost hear his mind. Then 
he uttered in a low, growling voice, Don't get carried away. I've provided for you all this time. If it had been me in the past, I would have shrunk at his anger. I was not such a timid woman anymore, you know. Well, okay then. You don't have to support me anymore. I'm ready for that now. W what do you mean? I mean, I don't need you anymore. Who in the world would want to be married to a big baby who can't do anything on his own? I was fed up with him. If it was just his outburst at me, I might have endured. Wait, no, I wouldn't have. I thought we could have worked it out through talks and therapies. He went out drinking while I was seriously ill. He trashed the house, unable to live as a normal adult while I was in the hospital. He scored less than zero as a husband or a father. By the way, you said it was a drink with your friends, but I wondered what you were really doing. I gave him a death stare as I muttered. He flinched to my amusement. That's none of your business. Yes, it is her business. She has the right to know since she is your wife. Now, tell us the truth. Sam was trembling at Anne's harshness. Well, he fumbled for words. If you don't want to tell us, it's all right. You're already busted. I'll show you proof that you can neither run nor hide from. You can't possibly. At that moment, his face turned pale. Yes, you'd better come clean right away. You're not very good at this, are you? He hung his head down and gave in to our insistent pursuit. I'm sorry. He raised a white flag. To recap, he had been having an affair with a co-worker since I became pregnant. It was a very common story. What's her name? Which department does she work in? How often were you seeing her? We interrogated him with a smirk on our faces. I stopped the recording on my phone. Well done. We have a confession tape. Thank you so much for coming out clean. When I cheerfully thanked him, his expression turned back to a grimace. You tricked me! He exclaimed. Yeah, so what? I can't believe you were cheating on me. You just saved me the trouble of hiring an investigator. Thanks. You fooled me. He was frustrated and blamed me for the affair. I couldn't understand his logic at all. You were trying to grab my attention, so you played being sick. We are the same. Not at all. When I saw him stubbornly refusing to admit his own fault, I began to feel more miserable. Anne sighed deeply and mumbled, You're selfish, arrogant, and a liar, just like your father. No, not my dad. He was shocked by the unexpected remark. It was understandable. His parents divorced when he was in middle school, and he hated his father. According to what I had been taught, his father had a main strike and often got drunk and became violent. He never thought to be told that he was just like the man he despised. I don't drink and act out. That wasn't the point she was trying to make. I can tell you how many times your father let me sick when I was pregnant and went out drinking. I guess sons became like their fathers after all. If I knew that I should have divorced him before you could even remember, she said in disgust and a little sadness. He remained still, unable to move from the shock. I would rather not have a father who is a bad influence on the child. Don't you agree, Wendy? Right, we don't need him. Or rather, he should be eliminated. After hearing the most convincing reason for their divorce, he was at a loss for words. Why don't you reconsider? We're going to have a baby. Let's calm down, okay? He still had a strength back and came close to me in a coxic voice, like a small child back in his mother. What are you talking about? 
We're long past that stage. What am I supposed to do then? He covered his face with his hands in distraught. I could see his eyes peeking through between his fingers and checking my reaction. He still seemed to anticipate a better outcome. Then Anne delivered a final blow on him. Enough! If you persist any longer, I will disown you. What do you say now, huh? What the hell, Mom? Why won't you stand by me? He finally seemed to give up at a point. Some said a woman's enemy was a woman, but in the end, a woman's friend was also a woman. She stood by me to the end. I fought for divorce in the seventh month of my pregnancy. I had never imagined that having a child was going to destroy our marriage. Maybe the child had given me the blessing in disguise. After that, I returned to my parents' house and gave birth to a healthy baby boy. I had to inform my parents about my trouble, so when I returned with the big belly, they were taken aback. My father introduced me to a lawyer who helped me negotiate the divorce. I was able to get alimony that took into account the amount of emotional and financial pain and suffering. I also met the adulteress and gave her a month for till I was satisfied. After the divorce was finalized, Sam visited me several times, asking to meet his son. I still haven't received my child support payment. When I got sarcastic with him, he responded with an incoherent argument. You don't need that. We are a family, and the best thing for us is to be together. He made no sense at all. You scored below zero as a husband. At least fulfill your duty as a father to your child. If you don't, you are good for nothing like your father. He laughed in desperation, as if he had been hit over the head with a sledgehammer. He must have a loathsome image of his father in his memory. Rumor had it that he had resigned from his job. He complained to his colleagues about our divorce that it wasn't his fault, and it backfired. He seriously believed that he did nothing wrong. He told them exactly what he said and did to me, which disgusted everyone. At the same time, rumors of his affair with a colleague spread. No one felt sorry for him. He was seen as a scumbag in the company. He became isolated, and it was too uncomfortable for him to keep working there. He was a typical delusional man. I was afraid that he might have kept the illusion of us getting back together. Of course, I had no intention of doing so. Oh, Andy, I heard you are going back to work soon. Are you feeling better? Yes, I'm much better now. I have to work for him. That's right. You are a strong mother. I don't tell Sam about it, but I sometimes take my son to see Anne. I'm not your family now that you're divorced. Don't worry about visiting me. She used to feel bad for me. You saved not only mine but his life too. Now she holds her grandson happily in her arms. As you are an experienced single mother, please give me guidance. Of course. From now on, we are going to be sisters in arms. Or fellow detectives who have driven the villain to confession, we have become more like best friends now. Well, this kind of relationship isn't so bad. Sometimes I feel uneasy, though. You're just like your father. Her words stay with me. I wonder if one day my son will become just like Sam. Will there be a time when I think like father, like son? There's no point in worrying about the future. I will teach him right from wrong. I will tell him the importance of kindness and compassion. My son will be my son, no matter what. Nothing more, nothing less. As a mother, I will risk my life to raise him. The sunlight softly shines through the cold winter sky. I feel like it's cheering me on.